Hello there, friends. Today is Thursday, January 7th, 2021. It's still weird saying 2021. Anyway, um, I wanted to create today's video to share various perspectives pertaining to the last 24 hours. If I have time, I'll go back even further. So let's start. I received so many messages yesterday, um, all kinds of messages from what are your thoughts, what do you think, to, you know, almost trying to provoke me into feeling or into just having a certain feeling. And as I get through, you know, the summary of what happened yesterday, I do want to touch upon how we have to be really careful with our emotions and our feelings. And I will just reiterate a disclaimer of mine that I struggle as well daily. I'm not perfect. And I have to pray constantly that God helps to keep me grounded. My trust, my confidence, everything I believe in is grounded in my faith in God. It is in nothing else. So for people who don't understand that or share in that, there will always be areas of disagreement. Okay. But that's where everything comes from. And so a day like yesterday is a huge temptation for even Christians to kind of get thrown off of kilter. And, you know, our emotions can get the best of us. But I said uh, to someone last night, God's mercies are new in the morning. So when I woke up this morning, I felt an overwhelming sense of peace. I knew the Lord was prompting me to start my day in His Word. I chose not to put the media on. I chose to start my day grounded in truth, in Scripture. Right here. Okay? So this is always going to be something that I'm going to encourage my viewers to do as well. Start your day in truth. And that only comes from God's Word. So... I feel a peace. I feel ready to do this. I want to share some perspectives. And the hope of this video is to really, you know, be a peacemaker and hopefully try to bridge some gaps because I don't care who you are, what side of the aisle you are on. You have people in your life right now that do not agree with you. And if you don't believe that, then you're being foolish. There are people that are in your circle, in your family, in your friends that do not believe the same thing you do. And you have some choices to make, just like I have choices to make. And, um, you know, I want to address, you know, how we go about navigating these relationships as well and what God has taught me. So let's start with a recap of the media version from yesterday. Okay. So I was watching Fox News because I was at my parents' house and that is the only network that, you know, they had access to that, you know, was showing pretty much um, the majority. You know, I saw Trump's speech. I saw the crowds of people, I saw interviews, I saw, um, you know, and then when Congress started to convene and they got up to Arizona, it was objected by, um, you know, some of the Republicans. Um, they adjourned and that is when all hell broke loose, literally. So naturally, everyone is, is like, what the heck is going on? Um, I see Trump supporters, you know, busting into the Capitol building. Some scenes were aggressive. Other scenes were not. There were scenes of people walking into the Capitol building. Okay. So at this point, I'm like, huh, that's brazen. Uh, I wouldn't do that if I was there because my instinct just told me, you know, that's kind of risky, you know, like you're going to put yourself in trouble. And history has shown us, guys, that with any riot or protest, when that line is crossed, that's when danger occurs. And so my instinct would tell me, even if I was there that day, because I thought about going yesterday, obviously I wasn't there, I would have been like, I'm just going to stay here. I don't think it's a wise move. Nevertheless, Trump supporters did go into the Capitol building. Now, what happened after that is um, I saw, you know, a bunch of videos. And as you guys know, I do go to TikTok. I go to YouTube. I look at live videos. I knew people at the event yesterday. So I was getting text messages and information from them. My whole theory is 
give me all the information. Like I want it all. I want to make my own decision. I don't want the media just to pick and choose the clips that they're going to show me because I know and fully believe, and I'll take it to the grave, that the mainstream media is deceitful. They are going to manipulate the information with an intention in mind to control your emotions, to control your feelings. They don't want Donald Trump reelected. They projected Joe Biden as the winner. Yes, I'm not going to get into that whole debacle right now. Um, and so that is what they want. I did see some videos and some information that um, looked like some of these people that went into the Capitol building were extremists. Whether or not they were Antifa, extreme Trump supporters, um, any actions that involved breaking glass, um, being, you know, assaulting police officers, you know, pushing their way in. Um, I, I don't want to say that, you know, I don't want to undermine what was done at the Capitol building, but let's be fair. The Congress was able to reconvene within hours. So obviously it wasn't like uh, a war zone. Okay. Obviously, if they were back in the building, you know, I think it's safe to say that it was maybe, you know, first or second degree burns. Um, I did see some photos of people that look like, you know, they could be Antifa. There's some information surfacing within the last, you know, 12, 15 hours of individuals that have been face recognized as Antifa. But I believe that the media is trying to get people to focus in on that 1%. In fact, it was probably less than 1% because let me show you a picture of the crowds that gathered yesterday. Okay. You're not going to see these on the media. In fact, these photos on Instagram, I wasn't even able to share. Okay. And I'm going to get to Facebook and how the censorship is taking a place, of course, taking place because again, the narrative is always controlled. Okay. I'm going to estimate that at least 50,000 people were there yesterday, at least maybe over a hundred thousand. Okay. It could have been close to a half a million, maybe a million, but the percentage of people that went into the Capitol building was less than 0.1%, okay? Now, does that mean that all Trump supporters should be shamed? Does that mean that all Trump supporters that were there that have this type of aggression in their blood all of a sudden? No, and if you think that, then you're getting that from the mainstream media. Now, keep something in mind. November 5th is when 80 million Americans woke up and said, huh, this election does not seem right. Something doesn't feel right. Something weird happened in the last 24 hours, okay? Now, let me ask you something. For the past two months, has any violence taken place? Have any cities been burned? Have any personal properties, personal businesses, personal homes, cars, police cars, has anything been burned, looted, destroyed? Have innocent pedestrians been assaulted? No. So let's just keep things in perspective. What happened yesterday is important to understand. It is important to understand why tens of thousands of people went to Washington, D.C. If you're not trying to understand that part, you are missing the mark. Here's a little tangent. Lately, I've been watching the series The Crown. I know I'm very late to that bandwagon. I'm usually always late to bandwagons, but I'm watching this series and it's excellent. What I'm really interested in is watching the young Queen Elizabeth trying to discern right from wrong and get her sea legs and being a leader of the country of England. It's not an easy task to be a leader. I couldn't help but to ask myself, what if it was her and what happened yesterday before the whole Capitol incident and tens of thousands of people from the country of England were outside of her doors? What would she do? I think it's safe to say that a good leader would not ignore that many people. They would not tell them to shut up. They would not tell them to go home. They would acknowledge the fact that half of the country is feeling extremely concerned about the integrity of our elections. 
So I want for you to take a moment and kind of decompartmentalize just like you do with Black Lives Matter protests. There's always that piece that becomes violent and everyone wants to say, but that's not us, that's not us. Well, guess what? Don't be a hypocrite. That's not Trump supporters either, okay? We're not out to be violent. We're not out to, you know, vandalize or make people feel like they can't be safe. That is not the heart of a true patriot. Let me take this opportunity to just reiterate what Trump supporters really do believe in. And maybe you can find a common ground and be willing to still embrace the relationships that you have with people who do not think exactly like you do. Trump supporters recognize what Trump has done for the country over the past four years. They did not get the information from mainstream media. They got it from other sources. They acknowledge the fact that he is pro-life, he is pro-Israel, he's done so much for the Middle East in maintaining peace, he's brought our troops home, he secured our borders, he helped our economy, he got people back to work. People who voted for Donald Trump want to keep our freedom. We want a smaller government, not a bigger government. We don't want our taxes raised. We don't want the middle class to have to feel obligated to pay for other people's loans. We want to be able to continue to prosper. We want to know that we can trust the integrity of our elections. We want full transparency. There were observers at these poll locations on election night that were not allowed to watch what was going on. And if they were, they were hundreds of feet away. There was no reason to tape up windows. And I ask you, what has the Democratic Party to lose by saying yes to a full audit? Now, I know many people may believe that there is no evidence. You're convinced that there is no evidence. 80 million people. 80 million Americans. This is 50% of the population. Now, it may not happen, and I want you to understand a few things. You can ask your Trump supporter friends if you're brave enough to engage in a normal conversation with them, are you gonna be able to live with the results? If you knew for sure that Joe Biden won on November 3rd, would you be able to move on? And we would say, didn't we do that when Obama won? So now I wanna talk more about uh, my perspective, I know that I share this with a lot of conservatives who um, not only watched the events unfold yesterday, but we watched, you know, some news outlets and like I said, you know, videos from um, multiple sources. Um, I shared a video on my Facebook of policemen at the Capitol building opening the gates and letting people in. Um, I only shared that because mainstream media was not. And interestingly, Facebook removed that video. Now I want you to take a minute and ask yourself, why would Facebook remove this video? Is it going against community guidelines? No, quite the opposite. If anything, it would add another layer of factual evidence of what happened yesterday. That is the number one takeaway that I would love for people to understand in watching this video, is to just be careful. Let's look at something else that happened yesterday. A young woman, a 25-year-old female veteran, was shot and killed in the Capitol building. This broke my heart, and I'm going to tell you why. She was a Trump supporter. She made a bad choice. She should not have gone in that Capitol building. I thought to myself, what if that was my son? In fact, if my son were older, I probably would use this as an example to remind him that even when you are going along with a crowd, and you're going for the right reason, there will always be opportunities of temptation to not only necessarily do something that is evil or wrong, but also dangerous and to make good choices and to not feel like you have to always be a follower. My heart goes out to her and her family and I do encourage you to pray for them today. So the other thing I want to touch upon is the fact that the media is creating a narrative to build even more hostility and resentment to Donald Trump. I watched his entire speech yesterday um, before the Capitol building incident. There was never a mention for the crowd to do any such thing or to do anything violent. Um, I also noticed that some media outlets are sharing the narrative that Donald Trump refused to condemn what happened in the Capitol building. And that is not true. He said what any good leader should say, I know how you're feeling. 
In other words, I validate your feelings because you're part of this country. I know you're angry, but we do not behave like this. Please go home. Why couldn't Joe Biden or any of the Democratic mayors or Hollywood that was bailing out Antifa for doing wrongful deeds, why didn't any Democrats say this for several months when Antifa was on the scene? That's beyond me. But again, more manipulation from the media. So in summary, yesterday was a, a huge day in history. I understand that some people are like, oh my gosh, yesterday was such an embarrassment to our country. I don't know why they weren't saying the same thing for the past several months, but whatever. I think it's fair for me to speak on behalf of a lot of conservatives that we are willing to accept whatever God's will is. Trump supporters do not worship Donald Trump. In fact, this is way bigger than Donald Trump. I think the safest and wisest decision you can make with someone who does not agree with you is to just agree to disagree. Look at the things that you do have in common. We both want truth, right? You do want the truth. Okay, well, I believe that I'm getting the truth here. You believe you're getting the truth there. Where does the hatred and the resentment come in? Where is that coming from? I also want to point out that there is plenty of evidence of the media lying over the past four years. It's out there. And if you want, I can create a whole video on it. But do you think that would be enough to convince you to stop placing all of your trust in whatever the media shows you and tells you? Last but not least, I wanna reference some history and some scriptural references that will really add a spiritual perspective that I don't want you to miss. I wanna share something that happened in history to the nation of Israel. I'm gonna to have to read my notes for this one. Just let me summarize what happened to Israel back in the 80s and late 70s. So Lebanon at this time had been a long safe harbor for terrorist groups such as the Palestine Liberation Operation, Organization, excuse me. The PLO was created in 1964 during the Arab League Summit in Cairo, Egypt with the alleged purpose of the liberation of Palestine, but in reality, its main objective was the destruction of the nation of Israel through acts of terror. In 1978, PLO terrorists penetrated the northern border of Israel and murdered 39 innocent victims, 13 of which were children. After this attack and others like them, Israel forces crossed into southern Lebanon, pushing the terrorists back from the border, but to no avail. The terror continued. Even after the U.S. helped broker a ceasefire agreement in 1981, the PLO repeatedly violated the truce and continued to build their forces and increase their arsenal while killing Israelis along the way. During the 11-month ceasefire period, Israel endured 270 PLO terror attacks that killed 29 Israelis and injured more than 300 people. In June of 1982, the IDF moved into Lebanon to drive out the Palestinian terrorist groups through Operation Peace for Galilee. Ronald Reagan defended the Israeli operation. Now listen carefully. This war in Lebanon was fought on two fronts, the ground and in the media. Despite a series of attempted ceasefires by the Israelis, the PLO orchestrated assaults that generated required responses from the IDF, which is the Israeli um, forces. Unfortunately, the world press chose to accept the PLO's narrative and spin and blamed Israel. You hearing that? Rather than the provocators for the violence. So the media blamed Israel and not those who were provoking Israel. For the first time since Israel's rebirth as a nation, there was a civil debate on the war. Kind of like what we're seeing now. And as a result of the extreme internal dispute, Israel pulled out most of its troops from Lebanon in 1985. Despite Israel's voluntary withdrawal, its civilians continued to suffer terror attacks along with the Lebanese border. During the clashes between Israel and the PLO in the early 80s, Hezbollah, they referenced themselves as the party of God, gained strength and took root in southern Lebanon with the financial and military backing of Iran. Why am I sharing this with you? Because this is exactly what is happening today. 
The media is trying to cause a civil war. The media is trying to change the narrative. The people who support Donald Trump and voted for him want to sustain our freedom. That is what we are fighting for. This is not personal. It's not a personal attack on people. And if you don't see it that way, it is okay to disagree, but understand that we also are trying to fight for something good. We want our children to grow up with the same freedoms that we had. Friends, please try to find the good in one another. Try to settle our differences and agree to disagree. In the meantime, are you willing to pray for your country? Are you willing to pray for those who are not agreeing with you? These are things that we're gonna be held accountable for someday. So I wanna leave you with a couple scripture verses that I believe can really be helpful and eye-opening and remind us to be careful about the perceptions out there to make sure that our perception is aligned with God's perception. So 2 Timothy 3, 1 to 17. But understand this, that in the last days, there will come times of difficulty, for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness, but denying its power, avoid such people. Romans 16, 17 to 19 says, I appeal to you brothers to watch out for those who cause divisions and create obstacles contrary to the doctrine that you have been taught, avoid them. For such persons do not serve our Lord Christ, but their own appetites. And by smooth talk and flattery, they deceive the hearts of the naive. Luke 8, 17 says, Nothing is hidden that will not be made manifest, nor is anything secret that will not be known and come to light. There will be a time when things that are not being exposed will be exposed. God is going to choose that time, friends. And for those of you who may be feeling discouraged because the evidence does seem to keep getting buried, trust that God has a plan. Ultimately, God's plan is that all of us should come to know Jesus and be saved. On Monday and Tuesday of this week, there were many hearts that came to know Jesus for the first time. Revival occurred in Washington, D.C. The media is not going to tell you this part. I have been saying this for a very long time, that there is a spiritual layer of what is going on right now. While there are evangelical prophets who are proclaiming that the evidence will be exposed in time, it is, of course, possible that that will not happen. I'm prepared to accept that because I place my trust in God. It's more important to me to do what God wants me to do, to live a godly life, to share my faith with others, and not be afraid of speaking truth because of what people may think of me. I'm concerned of what God thinks of me, and you should be too. In closing and in summary, I'm going to continue praying for our country, for my loved ones, even for those who may be upset with me because I have a platform in which I may be sharing something that completely contradicts the narrative you are following. At the end of the day, I want God's will to be done. I do want for us to know the truth. I hope that we can continue searching for the truth and be open to the many perspectives that are out there so that we can form our own with godly wisdom. So friends, thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, I hope you'll give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing for more videos to come. God bless you and have a wonderful day.